from WBBZ TV Sports. It's time to meet the champ. Now, here are your hosts, Paul Peck and Sue Nowitzki. Well, hi, everybody. I'm Paul Peck, along with Hall of Fame bowler Sue Nowitzki, and welcome to this special edition of Beat the Champ. We have had a lot of fun over the last five years taking this sport to another level, seeing all the outstanding bowlers in Western New York, and seeing the reaction from the bowling community has been great as well. Absolutely. There's so many great bowlers in this community that don't do this for a living, but still come out here and perform on the weekends as if they do do it for a living. And, um, you know, and as far as the community goes, I get so much input from everyone, and we have seen so many great matches throughout the years that it's fun to actually look back and see a couple of them from time to time. All right, so here we go. It's the best of Beat the Champ. And we get it started with our rematch of our returning champion. His name is Joe Rubrecht. He was successful down at Lucky Lanes in Fredonia in beating Rob Pacoli, even though the scores in that match weren't quite what we're normally used to seeing. A win is a win. So now Rob's got that chance to come back and get a little bit of the revenge that you mentioned. Joe Rubrecht, uh, a Jamestown, Fredonia area guy from Jamestown, um, successful down mm -hmm. at those bowling centers, and we'll see how he travels here today. Well, Joe's been around a long time. I remember him from, you know, bowling leagues a while ago, and to be honest with you, I didn't even realize he was with Jamestown person because he's been in the Western New York area for quite a few things. And uh, a very good bowler, but opens up the lanes a lot, as you're going to see in this shot right here. Yeah, big hook mm -hmm. and a strike to get things started for Joe Rubrecht. So, again, th that first match, between the match two weeks ago between these two guys was 172 to 158. Those are unusual scores. I wasn't there when I saw the scores. I'm like, boy, that's that jumps out at you because that's just not normally what we see from our guys because of the high level of bowlers in the show are almost always in the in somewhere between two and 250 for, for wins in particular. <laughs> there you go, nice shot. Well, and we see this a lot. I mean, even house patterns can break down to be pretty ugly after a while of bowling on them with the different surfaces people use, the different places on the lanes people play. I mean, all of these bowlers are, their comfort zone might be in a different area, and then they break the lanes down funny because they're pushing the oil all over the place, and you can get ugly scores even on a house shot, yeah. which seems like it shouldn't be true, but it absolutely is, and we've seen it happen many, many times. And remember, that was the ninth match and last match of the month that we taped on that given day down at Lucky Lanes in Fredonia. So by then, the, the lanes were a little bit beat up. So again, that's what's great about this sport is a chance to come back again and start fresh. And obviously, this wouldn't be a rematch if Rocket Rob Piccoli <laughs> hadn't been the number one qualifier here um, to face our returning champion. Right, and this is a place where Rob is very, very comfortable. He bowls league here, and uh, his scores are high here. So when you come in, you already have an idea of where you're going to stand and what balls you're going to use, and you kind of like don't have to fish around at all like you do in houses you're not as familiar with. Right. This is the third appearance on the show for Joe Rubrecht. He uh, has win one win and one loss. Of course, as we mentioned, that one win coming two weeks ago at Lucky Lanes in Fredonia. And then he had appeared on the show, I believe, at Jamestown about a year or so ago. Oh, I just got back from bowling our state tournament. And, Please don't uh, tell me you had a few like that. A lot like that. Oh, no. I see that, and I'm like, ugh, replays of yesterday. Like, you hit the pocket. Uh-huh. <laughs> I mean, you do almost everything guess, right. You know, really, you, you get aggravated with a 7-pin or a 10-pin, but we see so many of them as right-handers. But those 8-pins and 9-pins on strikes, they, they hurt. Good spare pickup for Joe Rubrecht. And they can be game breakers, and you made a perfect shot. I mean, there, he couldn't throw it any better. He, he hit the pocket fine. Right. It just drove, it was driving so hard, it missed nicking that, that pin. There's an early look at the Castellone Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram scoreboard. Janelle Saban manning the scoreboard as always. One of the interesting things I want to point out is uh, through last month's shows, we talked a little bit about breakpoint. And the break point is the furthest point to the right that your ball goes before it makes the turn. Gotcha. So even though Joe is so much deeper on the lane, his break point, you'll watch how far to the right that ball gets down the lane. He's crossing the arrows around in between the, the third and fourth arrow, but the ball gets to about 
right there. Eight. Between five, between five and ten, but pretty you know, deep spread. down the lanes, isn't right. it? And when you watch Rob come up, his ball is going to roll over the same exact spot. Is mm -hmm. how they get there. But break points do tend to be the same. Uh, we always like to let everybody know what kind of an oil pattern the guys are battling here, um, and it's the pretty standard transit lanes house shot, right? Right. Which you know, a bowl league here, and it tends to be uh, quite a bit of oil in the middle and. It, it can get really dry to the right hand side. We saw um, Joe get to his break point a little early and the ball just snapped right off of it, which is why he went high. Um, that, with, with Rob's ball speed and his direction, that's why you're going to see most of the people that have qualified here, they're going to have a lot of ball speed and they'll be, gonna, be going away from the dry, not towards it. So the, his ball projection is more right to left than left to right. And you can obviously see much difference in the hook. This feels like a good time to take a short break. We'll be right back with more action on Beat the Champ. Instant replay on Beat the Champ is brought to you by Transit Lanes and Keglers. Join us for bowling, food, and drinks. Welcome back to Beat the Champ. Let's get back to the action here on WBBZ TV. Joe Rubrecht is 43 years old, employed uh, at the Cummins uh, diesel engine factory down there in Falconer, and um, you know has been doing that for a number of years. Been bowling for well over 30 years, and cumulative average of a little over 200, about 210 for Joe. And as you mentioned, that's what's fun about this show is. We get to see some guys from different parts of our area. This mm -hmm. is obviously Western New York covers a lot of air, a lot of, a lot of miles, right. and a lot of five different counties. And it's and it's great when we get to see a guy like Joe when we go down to Jamestown or Fredonia. And it's good to see him have to come up here and experience all the good guys that we have from Niagara County and Erie County in the Buffalo area. Well, that one just sort of ran out of steam, didn't it? Well, we didn't, oh, how about wow, that spare pickup? Again, he's throwing the ball from he, this, this whole, his whole projection going from left to right puts him in, in danger. He's got to get to that spot at the exact right time. He gets to a little bit early, it's going, it's going to overreact because he's thrown it into the drive. So there's a reason why everybody that made this first show has the same projection and is a high ball speed pl player. Well, let's see if that amazing four pin spare uh, for Joe can be maybe a momentum booster here as he gets set to roll in frame seven. And there you go, that's how you follow up a great shot with a good strike. And that's gotta be, how big a confidence boost is a couple of shots like that gonna be? Well, that was a do or die situation. I mean, at, at this point he needs, he needs Rob to have really a bad break because the way Rob's approaching these lanes, he's not going to leave one of those funky formations. He's just not. He's going right at the pins. He's going through the through the dry into the wet. Ball is not going to leave anything crazy. So he's going to be tough at this point. And Joe just had to. He's just trying to keep himself above water. the eight pin that will yep. not go down for Rocket Rob Piccoli. Well, he doesn't the last... quite seem as rockety as I remember him in the past. Well, he seems was making him... to, you know, he, he, I, we remember him originally, and the reason he's got that nickname was he just flew that and ripped that ball down the lanes. And as the day goes on. I feel like he's on... becoming more of a bowler and not a thrower, to use a kind of a baseball, more a pitcher and less of a thrower. Right. It, it's nice to have in his arsenal that he can amp it up like that if he has to, but it's been very good for him to be backing off that ball speed, like you, like you said. He's um, definitely, definitely learned how to, to, um, to slow it down and let the ball work a little bit more, like, you, yeah. like not a thrower, like Right. As much as we, we love to talk about the miles per hour mm -hmm. and the revolution, mm -hmm. the rev rates and all that stuff, it, it, bowling is not always about who throws it the hardest or no. the fastest. It's who throws it the best. And that's two in a row where Rob has left some single pins. There's a good chance we might see Joe Rubrick next month on our show because we're back down in his neck of the woods. <laughs> we're going to be at the Jamestown Bowling Company for next month's series of shows. Qualifying is going on right now for our trip 
down to Jamestown next month. Right, so the last chance to qualify and get on the show will be tomorrow, which is going to be the... Um, the 28th at 12 noon and 3 p.m. And then while you're there, if you make the top 24, they're going to have the roll off the same night. So it's a one stop down to um, to Jamestown for that. Good. So uh, we've had a cool little uh, swing there, at least you have, of <laughs> Bradford, uh, well, Bradford and then Salamanca uh, and then Fredonia here to transit and then back down to Jamestown. Right. It's almost in the southern tier as much as it is. Yeah. In and we do like going all the way to Jamestown uh, in, in May when, uh, when, when the weather is uh, actually very, very nice I know. down there. We'll have to see if there's a comedy show going on. There you go. Yeah, if anybody hasn't had a chance to check out the National Comedy Center, I'm excited to, whether we do it on this trip or at some point during the summer, I definitely want to get down there. All right, so now you just tighten this up a little bit. Those two taps for Rob has given Joe an opportunity to... To, to tighten this match up, we're looking at a 20, back down to a 20 pin lead for Rob, which if Joe strikes here, he can knock it down to the teens. All right, so again, that spare pickup was a huge momentum booster for Joe, and we'll see whether it's a momentum turner in this match. Ninth frame, big, Joe Rubrecht. Big shot here, shot of the match, really. Oh, that thing, just somebody put the brakes on that one about three quarters of the way down the lane. And another four pin spare. This one uh, presenting some challenges for Joe. Well, this is just as makeable as the last one. It's almost the same thing, um, except that the the middle pin is there instead of, instead of the 10. But he, the approach would be the same. Almost. Almost got it. But that open in the ninth frame is huge, as you talked about, a pivotal point in our match. So now, if Rocket Rob can finish things out smartly, uh, he's going to get his revenge and get a chance to move on. So no, he's just—if he keeps this one on the lane, this this will be over. You know, just it's over. But we still have to see the pins fall down. Yes, first. we do. So Rocket Rob Piccoli with a chance to avenge that loss from two weeks ago, and here's his chance in the ninth frame. Yeah, ring around the 10 still won't hurt him. We'll let Rob finish off the spare here, and we'll get you set up for our next match with, against another uh, veteran of transit lanes here. Frank Domenico will take on, uh, it looks like Rob, it will be Rob Piccoli in our next match. Here's Rob, gonna finish off the spare in the ninth frame. He and does, and it's a win. The match. And it's a win. Rocket Rob Piccoli has defeated Joe Rubrick. We will talk to Joe and get you ready for match number two when Sue and I return to Transit Lanes right here on Beat the Champ. Two ten to one eighty six. Rob Piccoli with the victory over Joe Rubrick. What's the challenge for you as a guy who bowls mostly down in the southern tier to have to come to a place where I don't know how much you've bowled here before, but as the returning champion, what's that challenge like? I don't know what the challenge is. The challenge is pretty much I don't bowl a lot mm -hmm. down there because my work schedule. So I, I got about nine games out of my belt all year. So to come out here, get lucky maybe, and then. Try to throw quality shots, but I'm not sharp enough, so I just come out here for the fun, support, beat the champ, and go on about my business. All right, well, it's, it's, it's good to have you on the show. We're in Jamestown next month, so maybe we'll get you back a little shorter drive. Yeah, yeah, real close, about eight miles. All uh, right. I'll be there. Well, good. All right, Joe says he's going to be there. Bill, make him feel a little happier in that drive Joe. home. Just to help you on your ride home. It'll pay for the gas on the way back. But thank you for coming to Bowling yeah. with the Transit Lanes. No problem. Always good to have Joe on the show. Match number two, Rob Piccoli, Frank Domenico, coming up next on Beat the Champ. Match number two has our winner, Rob Piccoli, taking on Frank Domenico from right here in Williamsville. Second match of the day here at Transit Lanes for Frank Domenico, his second appearance here on Beat the Champ. We saw him at the Tonawanda Bowling Center earlier in the year in 2008, where he lost to Josh Nowak. So second time around for Domenico, but 
an impressive young bowler here in Western New York. We'll rattle off some of his numbers and averages, Sue. And this is a guy that um, we may not have seen on our show very much, but we may be seeing a lot of. And that's a good way to get it started. What's interesting is he almost throws it harder than Rocket Rob is throwing it right now, although I think Rob has the capability to throw it as hard. This, this man throws it very, very hard. So coming off the win, 210 to 186 over Joe Rubrek, Rob Piccoli will try to keep a little streak going. He won a couple in a row last month down in Fredonia, and he'll look for two in a row here. A good, solid, kind of workmanlike victory at the 210 score. Made the spares he needed to make, uh, rattled off some strikes early, kind of set the tone, and there we go. He got a good tone set already. Well, one of the benefits of coming here to Transit Lanes is we get a chance to visit with one of our favorite people in Western New York, whether it's in the bowling community or anything else. It's Bill Truman. Bill, always good to be back here at Transit Lanes. Paul, thank you very much, Sue. Always a pleasure to sit in with you. Uh, I'm glad that you come back to Transit Lanes. We love having you over here. You guys go back a long way, don't you? Bill and I, absolutely. <laughs> Bowled against each other, with each other. It's been uh, worked uh, with each time. other. Worked I with mean, each yeah. other, yes. Well, that's great. And uh, this place is always looking good, and the scores are always good whenever we come here. And uh, Bill, I know part of uh, what what you guys are kind of in that mode of this time of year is getting ready for some stuff going on during the summertime. We do. We have our, our summer shootout, which is our big uh, bowling tournament on Tuesday nights. Uh, it's pretty much all the best bowlers in Western New York. Uh, we do have Sunday, May 5th and May 7th, a win a spot. Uh, bowlers on the Sunday night, anyone last year that bowled and made less than $300 in our tournament, we hand out close to $2,500 every Tuesday night. So if you made less than 300 uh, it's a spot time for you to come out and win a spot. Uh, then on Tuesday night, anybody can come out and bowl to win a spot on that one. And uh, what we do is we pay off, uh, depending on how many entries you get, you may win the whole spot or a, a partial part of your payment throughout the course of the uh, summer. It's 12 weeks, so we look forward to that. And uh, it'll get started on May 21st, right after the Buffalo Masters. Sue, so, uh, you know, bowling kind of winds down in the summertime, but that sounds like coming out here and watching the Tuesday night league here is about as good as you're going to get about an all-star match at a time of the year when there isn't a lot of bowling going on. Right, and it has always attracted spectators because everyone knows that the best bowlers are here, and you almost, uh, even year-round, that summer sweeper is probably the one place you can go to and see everyone compete, and right? We generally, we, we take the top 24, we generally have 85 to 95 bowlers, somewhere in that area. Top 24, everybody gets paid that makes the top 24, and then it's an elimination type tournament. So it'll go 24 to 12 to 6 to 3, and then it pays off the, the 1, 2, 3. But we pay everybody and you just move on, and you're bowling actually against the whole field, not just the person that you might be bowling against on your lane. So. So there you go. That's uh, something that you can throw on your calendar for the summer months if you want to get out of the heat a little bit. You want to come see some of the best bowlers in Western New York that might not be on that particular month's Beat the Champ, then here at Transit Lanes is the place to be. Frank Domenico, strike, strike, spare to open things up here. Rob Piccoli rolling in frame number three. Both of you guys are mentioning before we got started with this match that these are two guys that bowl very similar and bowl in the same places. So how does that affect the strategy? Well, when I look at it is, I mean, it could break it down because they're going to be both in the same area. So things could change a little bit as the game goes on. Uh, obviously with the lights here, that helps to change it too. But but they are both, but they both throw so hard. So I don't really see it changing right. a whole lot for either one Because they can just them. amp it up just a little bit yes. more. Uh, but I do see that Rob has gone to a little bit more surface and he, his ball is actually reading the lane earlier than, than Frank's. So even though they're in the same area, the strategy is a little bit different. Uh, Frank's using, uh, he's, he's got a, a little bit, his ball's going a little bit longer down the lane. He's relying on his ball speed. So he's going to be a little bit right of Rob, but at the same time, you know, you're looking at people playing the same exact part of the lane, and then Jeremy Zimmerman's going to come on, and he's going to play that same part of the lane. I mean, if they have to do anything, it probably will be just moving just a slight bit to the left with their feet or something to still stay in the same area. But, but they're just playing outside where it's the dry area of our lanes, and, uh, and they're just amping it up. They're firing it down there. 33 years old from Williamsville, employed as a laborer at Coca-Cola is Frank Domenico. He has been bowling since he was about 10 years old, and boy, he has a 234 average, which is impressive. Bowls a couple of nights a week uh, at bowling centers here in Western New York, and 
Uh, again, a little bit new to us on the show, but boy, uh, 234 average tells you tells me that the guy knows what he's doing, and uh, maybe a name that we're going to see a little more of moving forward. You know, I think that bowlers a lot of times, and I know it happened to me when I was younger. You, you get tricked into wanting to like see your ball hook, <laughs> and the least trouble you're going to get into is playing up the boards like these gentlemen are. You're going to see three people in a row that are going to be very effective, not miss the pocket most likely, for, and they're going to leave an 8-pin, 9-pin, 10-pin here and there, but they're going to stay out of trouble. When you start opening up the lane, you start inviting all kinds of trouble. Absolutely, and I think that's what Joe saw a little bit in the, in the first game exactly. that we saw, that he was covering a lot of boards, and I mean, if you made your shot and executed it very well, you were going to get a good result, but if you made a little bit of a mistake where it hung up in your hand or you pulled it a little, that you're going to have trouble with crossing all that many boards. But these guys go straight up, and so will Jeremy when he gets out here, too. Exactly. This looks like a good time to take a break. We'll be back with more Beat the Champ right after this. Welcome back to Beat the Champ. Uh, as we look at the Castellone Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram scoreboard, uh, the urgency factor is there for Frank. He's running out of time, uh, assuming that Rob isn't going to miss a lot of pins the rest of the way here. No, he's down 47 right now. And uh, that's that's going to be a big gap. And he doesn't seem to be getting a lot of breaks either. As you know, again, uh, there's that pin that holds up the four pin that just kind of got bumped a little bit and wouldn't go down. We talked a little bit in the first match, Bill, about. And we've discussed this with you in years past about this is the older part of transit lanes and it reacts differently than the higher lanes do because they're a little bit newer, right? Absolutely. Um, these lanes were put in, actually they weren't the original lanes. The, uh, these 12 were added on back in the 70s. But uh, so they all, there's little different characteristics in all three sections of the house because we have, it basically is a three sectioned house. Uh, even though it looks like one to 52 straight across, uh, they added these 12 on, they added 12 on the other end uh, back in the mid-70s. So the so. middle was the original part? Yes. Mm -hmm. And the run and for Rob Piccoli comes to an end after six consecutive strikes with a rather frustrating leave here in the seventh frame. Well, he got that one a little high, and that's what had happened earlier, and he had made the adjustment, but this one he kind of looked like he tugged it he in a little like bit. He looked like he tugged this one, yeah. And, uh, and that, that can happen with, when you get a little high and straight through, you can leave the four nine. You hope that it's just a four, but the ball goes through and doesn't take the nine out. All right, so the four goes down on the spare, but the nine does not. So it's an open for Rob in the seventh. And, and like we talked about, uh, there's the door opener potentially um, as the run of strikes comes to an end. And now can Frank Domenico respond? And can Rob respond? Well, it went from almost 50 pins difference to a, a 24 pin difference. Uh, so. Pretty amazing turn. Yeah. And there's and the, open is a big, is big. There's the response for Rob who comes right back with another strike. He didn't throw the ball that badly when he left the 4-9. I mean, he could have got a break and just left one of them. So you, you don't like leaving the 4-9. It, it happens to all of us at times, some more than others. And then to just bounce back and throw a strike, and uh, he will have forgotten about that. He'll probably be a little wide, if I'm going to guess, <laughs> when he gets back on 12. It might be lighter right in the pocket because I think he'll make an adjustment when he goes back to 12. So a few minutes ago I asked you about sensing when to react and to change. How do you know sometimes when not to change and when well, what might have just happened to you might just have been I know when bad I talk, luck? When I talk to the kids sometimes about it is like don't make a move on a bad shot. Like, you know if you, if you threw it absolutely perfect and you threw, it came off your hand good and you felt really comfortable with it then you make your move. If you didn't you drop the ball in the right spot, or you tugged it, or you're a little slower, don't make a move then because now you're really going to start fishing and get guessing because you didn't make a good shot. Exactly. Am I right, Sue? Exactly. I was going to say the same exact thing when you asked that question. This exact thing that came to my mind is you have to know the difference between a good shot and a bad shot. Now it's a good you shot. Cannot make, you cannot make a change off of a, off a, off a bad shot. And Believe me, if you don't bowl every single day and practice all the time, you're going to make a bad shot. And you know when it comes off your hand, when your timing's a little bit off, if you miss your target to the right, you miss your target to the left, don't make a move off of that. And as bowlers, you know, as you become yeah, more experienced, right, you hope 
you know, a good shot from a bad shot, not just blame the lanes or blame. And you have to be honest with yourself right. and say, you know, I just didn't throw that one the right way, so mm -hmm. I'm not moving. I just, if I throw it well, and it now reacts a different way, now we make a change. And to me, as you guys explain that, which is terrific to hear it explained that way, um, I would think it comes with experience to know when it was a good shot and when it wasn't a good shot. That right. The only way you get there is throwing thousands of shots to know, okay, this is what the good ones Well, you know, you, when like. you fall off your feet, or when you, you're your balance. You, you're looking at the second arrow and you hit the first arrow, those are bad shots. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you missed by an arrow. Yeah. Yep. So Rob Piccoli <laughs> has been perfect in this match, except for the one bad break in that seventh frame. And he is on his way here to running strikes in every frame except that seventh. Uh, he'll have a couple more chances to do that here in the tenth. But what a match by Rob Piccoli. And what a what a what a tough break, or we'd be talking about a 300 game here. That's sure. Exactly right. I mean, that only was maybe a board high. I mean, that's how much we're talking. You know, there's 40 boards out there, and there's uh, he was like one of them, just a little too far left, and it just right. went through. So. Which sort of goes to how hard it boards. is to have 300 games and have a lot of them, and and all it takes is one little bad break yep. or one board off like that. So, uh, so I'll tell you what, Rob Piccoli now is really bowling very well not just today but as we've seen over the last couple of months that he's been on this show um, he really is starting to find a groove and maybe it comes from bowling as much as he does so a chance here on his final roll of this match to post up a very impressive score uh, and it doesn't quite finish it off exactly the way that he would have wanted it to, but it's gonna be a victory and a 265 for Rob Piccoli. He'll get the victory. We'll talk to Frank Domenico, get you ready for match number three, which should be a terrific one when we return to Transit Lanes. Our final score, 265 to 201, as Rob Piccoli defeats Frank Domenico. Frank, you started off pretty well, but there's Rob knocking all those strikes down, and you hit a couple of stretches there where you left one pin. How difficult was that to overcome? Uh, yeah, Rob was uh, he was spot on. He, he had the pressure from the beginning, and then uh, pretty much after I went to left that eight pin, it just seemed like nothing was falling. But uh, that's the way it goes sometimes. Right. Uh, we got to get you hanging out here more, right, and uh, get you back on this show more. Oh uh, yeah, I'm in. Uh, I'm always bowling in the city more often than not. Uh, trying to expand my horizon, coming out uh, to different areas. So we'll uh, see how the next month goes. And you get to hang out with Bill Truman more if you come <laughs> here too. So Bill, Frank, good bowling today. You were in the right spot. I think just the adrenaline maybe got you going a little bit, and uh, we reacted a couple shots, but you threw the ball well. You were in the right area. So nice bowling. Little gift for you to go home right. with. Thank Hope you. to see you again. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Good job by Frank Domenico. Next match gonna be a good one. The red hot Rob Piccoli and Jeremy Zimmerman stick around coming up next on Beat the Champ. We close out the day with a couple of Beat the Champ stars in our final match. It's the red hot Rob Piccoli against Jeremy Zimmerman making his 14th appearance here on Beat the Champ. 16 wins against only seven losses and the longest consecutive winning streak in the show's history of our return for the last four years. And here we go. This one should be a great match. Jeremy didn't love that as he spun his head around quickly after he threw it, but he gets himself a strike. So Rob Piccoli, who is now up to his Beat the Champ record to seven wins versus eight losses, thanks to the two in a row here today. Chance to even that out at 500 with a win and a sweep of the week. And we'll see if he can't keep his red hot bowling going. Coming off the 265 victory in the victory over Frank Domenico. And for the first time today, Rob does not open with a strike. Well, this is what we were talking about when Bill and I were talking about him moving to the right and 
playing more against the gutter because his ball was biting up early. That was his ball reading the ball, reading the lane early. Yeah, you briefly saw it. We'll welcome her in in just a moment. General Manager here of Transit Lanes, Donna Perna. Thanks, as always, for being great hosts as Rob Piccoli gets the spare to go here. And it is always fun for us to come back here, Donna. This feels you, a little bit like home here. here in Rapids and a couple of the other places that we've been to a lot of us feel like home for this show. It's fun to have you back. Yeah. We'll and, get a and after prettier. I let Sue do all the driving down to the southern tier the last <laughs> yeah. two months. Yeah, thanks. Especially in this and winter. And all the talking. That's Especially right. Especially in this winter. And right off the bat, somewhat surprisingly, Rob has stumbled a bit here based on what we've seen in the last couple of matches, Sue. His ball is just reading the lane a little early. He's either going to move his feet in or he's going to switch balls. I don't think throwing harder is going to help him here. He's going to have to make a little bit of a decision on what he's doing with those bone balls. So it's two spares to open things up for Rob Pacoli. And now Jeremy Zimmerman off a strike in the first frame. We'll get going on frame number two. Last time we saw Jeremy, he was on the show back in October of last year when he bowled at Island Lanes. He is number three on our list of wins with 16. Number three on our list of most show appearances. As I mentioned, this is his 14th. And he's and one of the real characters of right. Beat the Champ, right? We don't really have to talk too much about how Jeremy's bowling because his demeanor will do it for us. Yes, you will know exactly <laughs> how Jeremy feels like things are going based on nothing else but watching him. Donna, what's, uh, you, we're getting to that point now uh, where you're, you know, the, the winter, the busy winter time of your leagues is starting to wind down a little bit and you're shifting gears. So what's uh, what's ahead here in the next couple of months for Transit Lanes? So actually Transit Lanes, um, unlike many bowling centers in Western New York, uh, we, we have a downtime when our leagues, end, but our summers are full. Um, we book uh, a lot of fundraising events through a lot of corporations, a lot of not-for-profits. And one of the things we found, which is great for the not-for-profit booking here, is that bowling is a sport everyone can do. So, you know, Buffalo and Western New York, you you know, we wait for the, the warm weather all year long. And so one of the biggest things to raise money is golfing events. And what we find is not everybody can golf. So mm -hmm. not everyone can participate that in, in that, but everyone can bowl. Whether you're six or whether you're 86, you can join in this. And so this year we've already done Kids Escaping Drugs. We've done JDRF. Uh, we've done the Ride for Roswell. Yeah, you had a big event with here. Russ Salvatore and, and the gang and Fran Bax a couple, yes. about a month or so yes, ago, right? Did. Yes, a couple of weeks ago. Um, coming up is the Buffalo RPM, which raises money for children with autism. We also have the Buffalo Zoo that comes here. So we do a lot of fundraising events in the, in the off season because it's fun. I know you've had some fun events here with uh, members of the Bills and the Sabres. Uh, we have. We had uh, one on a more than a few occasions, ago. Yes, right? we did. Yes. And um, it's, it's just a great way to bring people together right. to enjoy this, this sport of bowling. Is, and is Bill Truman them. booking these events while those guys were in the penalty box with him? Is that how that's <laughs> happening? I ask him to. I'm not sure he always does. <laughs> hey, Jack, sorry about that hooking call. Can you, can you get a little bowling event going for us go. over at uh, Transit Lanes? <laughs> Of course, Bill Truman is an is an off ice official at the arena. That's if you're wondering why why we're even talking about that. That's why. Good strike for Rob Piccoli. His first of the match comes in the fourth frame. We'll tell everybody if they're thinking of booking an event here or they have a charity that would like to do something like that. What's the process? How do they get the ball rolling on something? So like all this? they have to do is call us, and either myself or our event planner will take it from there. And we do so many of these. We offer so many different ways to do it, so many different packages, and it really becomes seamless. We do all the heavy lift, and they are able to raise funds, and we help them promote it and all of that. So it's a great opportunity for them. Good strike for Jeremy Zimmerman in the fourth frame as uh, he seems to be finding a bit of a groove here. and can always watch Jeremy sort of go through that pre that pre uh, uh, frame uh, process of his to get himself in the right frame of mind. Yeah, we talked a little bit about um, the summer sweep for starting uh, with Bill because I know that I've been getting a lot of questions about the summer sweeper, and um, that this is just a great place for 
people who like bowling to come and see everyone. Where are you going to see Brett Angelo, Jack Jurek, right. and then and let alone everyone that people watch on the show from week to week? They're all here every and that's single great. Tuesday, right? And they love it, and, you know, it's become almost kind of a tradition that Transit Lanes holds that. Everyone knows that it's on Tuesday, and they know when to sign up, how you win a spot, and all of that. So it's great. We look forward to that every year. Yeah, that's always, that's always fun, and I'll tell you, that extra experience that you get, that the bowlers get by, you change the shot, the shot changes every two weeks, so you get to bowl on something a little different. It's not just a typical house shot. The action will continue on Beat the Champ in just a minute. Instant Replay on Beat the Champ is brought to you by Transit Lanes and Keglers. Join us for bowling, food, and drinks. Welcome back to Beat the Champ. Because we're not the typical, um, people have a very, uh, defined perception of what Bowling Center food is like, and we're not that. Mm -hmm. So when they come here, they're always surprised, and, I, and they, you know, we always hear, "Oh my God, we did not realize this is what you do." So it's it's fun, and we do that as well. We do a lot of outside catering now. Yeah, I, I I think you're probably right. Most people wouldn't necessarily, on first thought, think that a place like a bowling center would be would have the kind of high level food and, and things like that, that that a restaurant per se would, but exactly. that's exactly. one of the nice niches that you've built over the years here. We have, and we're very proud of it. It's a scratch kitchen. They work very, very hard, and we accommodate everyone with food allergies, along with providing them with some innovative ideas and dishes to serve. And everything we do, we can customize. So if they want to cater, we can do that, and we can bring into their home whatever they would like. Well, as you can clearly see from Jeremy's reaction after that one, uh, he, he's not getting exactly what he wants here. It's been a little, a uh, couple strikes, spare, strike, spare, strike, spare. Um, consistently, we normally see from a Jeremy Zimmerman hasn't necessarily been there in this match, and um, but I think that's probably the case on Rob's side as well too. So. Right, it's a three-pin match, and that's because during this time, this is the perfect time where the transition starts to take effect. So. The oil's moving around on the lanes at this point. These guys are playing the same spot. We've got three bowlers in the same spot. And that's what you're going to see as the lanes transition. A, a 10 pin here and there, a little tough to carry, and then it's your job to figure it out. There's the Castellone Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram scoreboard, which shows this one tight as Rob Piccoli heads to the seventh frame. Donna, we talked a little earlier in the show uh, as we were sort of laying out, and then Bill clarified for us the middle lanes were first, the left side second, the right side third. Uh, I'm always amazed when I see that picture of what this place looked like when it was first built, late 50s, correct? It was built in 1959. Yeah, are you amazed every time you, sometimes when you drive down Transit Road and drive into this place to remember what you were, when you were a kid what it was like? I I am, I am, and, and when my father-in-law first came up with this idea to have a bowling center in Williamsville, this was literally farmland. There was nothing around there. Transit Road was a mere just two-lane road. Nothing like it is today. <laughs> I know, it's so innovative when you see the the drawings of, of these bowling centers being up and nothing being around them, and I know that Lucky Lanes of Fredonia was the same thing. And, and Russ Salvatore brought him up earlier. I think that was a hot dog stand on the corner of Genesee and Transit Arena. Was. Everything out here was, there was yeah. nothing. And yeah. um, these people who are innovative enough to come put their business out here probably got a decent price on land and let the businesses come to them. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I, I would assume probably, uh, as you mentioned, your father and all people told him he was crazy for building something. You're mm -hmm. all the way out there, you're building it? <laughs> he was very visionary. And yes, they did tell him, well, you know, no one's going to go all the way out there. And right. Because at the time, all I mean, the, the city of Buffalo within the city limits probably had 25 or 30 bowling centers. Correct, sets. correct. And so we put one out here, and, and the rest, as they say, is history. That's pretty cool yeah. stuff. All right, speaking of cool stuff, both these guys are starting to heat up a little bit. Two strikes in a row for Piccoli, frame seven and eight. Jeremy Zimmerman maybe finds his groove a little bit with a good strike there in eight. So this is exactly the match, Sue, that we thought it would be between one of the hottest guys in town and one of the best guys in town. Well, right. it was a three-pin match, but the three pins were to Jeremy's advantage. And now with Rob posting up that double, he has now put himself in the driver's seat. So he's got um, a seven, eight-pin advantage, depending on his fill ball coming up in the ninth. So this is a big ninth frame here for Jeremy Zimmerman. 
just did not have the oomph that he needed there. No, so the knew. seven pin stays. Yep, he knows that he needed to uh, strike up, strike to keep that pressure on Rob. And now, of course, Jeremy Zimmerman became a beat the champ uh, legend. Uh, back in uh, 2017 when he rattled off 14 wins in a row. Three of them at the Rapids Bowling Center, then a complete nine match sweep at Classic Lanes, and then two more at the Rapids Bowling Center. And that 14 match winning streak remains our record here on Beat the Champ. Uh, the closest challenger was Dana Vojtovic, who has gone 11 in a row back late 2017, early 2018. Only three winning streaks of double digits. From Zimmerman, 14, Goitoba, 11, and Kevin Bianco won 10 in a row back in 2017. Well, Rob's gonna be tough to beat, so this is a big shot for him. He can, he can shut Jeremy right out. He's gotta finish up here. First one. Three in a row for Rocket Rob Patoli. And boy, you can just see confidence oozing from Rob Piccoli. That doesn't necessarily sound the way it should have <laughs> sounded, but, but you can just see him bowling with a lot of confidence. All right, so to shut Jeremy out, he needs a spare here. And uh, strike will, will take care of that as well. But a spare will be enough to, to win. That was a great game. Jeremy never missed the pocket. And it won't be a strike, but it'll be an opportunity for a spare for Rob Bacoli to sweep the week here at Transit Lanes and advance to next week's show and face potentially three new bowlers, including a couple guys making their Beat the Champ debuts, but not their Transit Lanes debuts. <laughs> we'll talk more about that next week. So here's the chance to clinch it, and Rob Piccoli does with a 10th frame spare. So Rob Piccoli defeats Joe Rubricht, he defeats Frank Domenico, and now a win over Jeremy Zimmerman. Donna, it is always fun to visit with you. It's always fun to be back here at Transit well, Lanes. Great. And Thanks the so bowling much. is always great as we've already gotten started here. And so, we love to have you. Donna Perna, the general manager here at Transit Lanes. We will wrap up a great match and get you ready for next week's series of more great matches with Sue and I return to beat the champ. Two great bowlers provided a great competitive match. Rob Piccoli, 225 to 218. Not only are you bowling against a guy who's bowling great right now, but what else sort of, what, what, what was the downfall for you a little bit in that one, Jeremy? I got nervous. Oh, that's it's surprising to hear been, from you. I've been on TV in a long time and got nervous, but I'm glad to be back. Michelle Jagzinski actually got me to bowl, so. Well, it, it's, it's good. We miss having you on this show as much as we're used to having you, and and uh, I'm surprised to hear you say that you got nervous, but uh, you'll have to work on that yep. for us and, and get bowling, back here again. He's bowling great, so. Yes, he is. So, Bill? Jeremy, thank you. Thank I know you, we'll see you this summer. Here's oh, something absolutely. to start for the Tuesday shootout, because I know you'll be here for that. And uh, and the one lane looks like it's just going to give you a little trouble, but that, otherwise, you're good. That left lane's tight. Yes. We'll see, yeah. you, we'll see you on Tuesdays. Yep. So you're getting used to standing next to Rob, aren't you? <laughs> Absolutely. You've been bowling great. This has been a great season for you. And I think the name of the game today was, you know, we always talk about your ball speed, and it seemed like you've got that toned down a little bit. And I saw the ball biting up for you a little bit. You're all playing the same spot. Tell me a little bit about what happened for you out there. Yeah, I was just trying to make good quality shots one at a time. Uh, first game, uh, is uh, nice and simple you, how I usually do, but then uh, it started the ball started checking a little bit early, so I switched to a ball that kind of rolled more smoothly and uh, carried carried me through. So. Did you use um, any? Did you try to amp up on the ball speed at all, or try to keep your ball speed pretty consistent? No, pretty consistent. Um, and Jeremy bowled a good game, uh, so. No, you did a great job, and it's it's fun. It's been fun watching you transition from just us talking about how hard you throw it to really just um, you know letting it roll a little bit more and just the fact that you have all that in your arsenal has really been good for you but great bowling good luck Thank you. going forward three in a row for rob five of the last six for rob can he keep that streak going well we'll find out when he comes back next month or next week rather we'll talk about next week's show sue and i will when we return to wrap up week number one here at transit lanes in williamsville
Well, Rob's got one of the best bowling nicknames in town, but I feel like we may have to alter it to, like, sometimes Rocket Rob Bacoli because, as you asked him, his ability to adjust and not always try to throw it as hard as he can is the reason why he has been successful. Right, his game has really evolved, and we've got to watch it this year on Beat the Champ. I think it's turned him into a much better bowler. He's not just as one-dimensional with that speed. And, um, you know, he came against a couple guys this week that threw it in the same place, kind of threw it the same way, and he overcome that. So next week's going to be interesting. He's got a little less experience that he's got to face. So, um, you know, he's going to be he's going to be strong. Yeah, so he'll be back next week with Rob Piccoli. Three new challengers, including two of them making their Beat the Champ debut. So there's an opportunity for Rob Piccoli to put a little win streak together here. Yeah, that's definitely true. There's that opportunity. But we don't know a lot about these guys. We haven't seen them as much as we've seen some of our more regular faces on Beat the Champ. So they might have a few tricks up their sleeve. All right, well, you'll have to tune in and find out. Can some of those newcomers become the next Beat the Champ stars? Or will Rob Piccoli? Keep it going. The only way to know is to join us next week on Beat the Champ.